Welcome to Saturday Primetime, presented by H&R Block. A big-time matchup here in the SEC. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Auburn Arena is packed. It is loud for this huge game between Kentucky and Auburn. The Tigers taking on the Cats. Inside every cat lies a predator. And just after sunset, they're the most dangerous. It's February, and no one is backing down from a fight. We gotta play fast, we gotta hit him out, we gotta stay together, bring him out, go! If you can't guard him, you can't be in the game! The Kentucky Wildcats are bringing elite talent. Nobody in the country can stop Hagen. It's not just Dowdy the Wildcats need to tame. Dowdy! They're up against the whole Auburn pack. Wildcats, Tigers, on the prowl in prime time. This is an ESPN Sonic blockbuster. And if that tease and this atmosphere and all this noise doesn't get you fired up for this game, Bruce Pearl will. We respected our opponents all year long, okay? Don't fear this one. This one's better. They'll make some shots, they'll make some plays, okay? They're not better than us. They're not better than you on a good day. On a good day! But can we beat Kentucky if it's not a good day? If it's not a good day, if it's not a good day, can we beat them? No, sir, we can't. We're fixing to have us a good day. Bring them in here, come on, come on. I want your best day. I want your best day. That's what I'm looking from you. Yes, sir. Let's go. Here we go. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Let's go. I want your best day. Just can't get enough of that. Dan Shulman, Jay Billis. I need your best day today. <laughs> you got no shot of that. <laughs> uh, can't get enough of the Bruce Pearl pregame speech and can't get enough of all the hype and all the energy in this building. Give us a matchup that's really working for you. There are excellent guards in this game, but I think the matchup inside is really intriguing, starting with Kentucky junior Nick Richards, who over the last nine games, there's not been a better big guy in the country. He's averaging 17 points, just about 10 rebounds, 67% from the field over that period. He has been absolutely dominant. He has to stay on the floor, and his counterpart uh, at Auburn is going to be Austin Wiley inside, a low post big guy, and Wiley's got terrific feet. He can run the floor and he's a high level rebounder averaging over almost 10 rebounds a game on the season he's got to get nick richards in some foul trouble yep. and force him to guard you have to go at richards otherwise he's going to have his way here in the jungle that was a lot of the talk at the auburn shoot around this morning for more on the atmosphere here in this building let's say hello to the bravest person here today in holly road Bless you, Holly. Great job. What's on the line here today? Well, these two teams are currently second and third in the SEC standings. Everybody's looking up at LSU, which won again today. Beat Ole Miss at home by 10. They are 8-0. A lot of close wins for LSU so far. Obviously, whoever wins this one is in better position to try to make a run at LSU for the top spot. We are ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. And so, my friends, are the Auburn fans. The first time that game day has come to Auburn, and they are fired up. Kentucky with the first possession of the game. Ashton Hagens, the outstanding point for guard for Kentucky, being guarded by Isaac Okoro, the freshman from Auburn. Okoro is a high-level defender that can switch off and guard absolutely anybody, one through five. Has some good size on him as well. Okoro, 6'6", 225, an early slip there by Tyrese Maxey. Shot clock running down on the Cats. If anybody makes a catch as good as Maxey's in the Super Bowl, that'll be something, because that dude <laughs> caught that ball and could have walked easily. 
but he has his, his left knee was a great pivot <laughs> knee. What is a catch, though, really, Jay? And then Maxi <laughs> knocks down a three. Remember, Maxi's had some big games against big time opponents this year, like Michigan State and Louisville. First possession now for Auburn. At times, they have struggled to score. At times, Jay, as you know, they've been a very slow starting team, but most of that has come on the road. Jay Vaughn McCormick and swatted out of bounds easily by Nick Richards. Maxey did a great job of staying in front of McCormick and then forcing him to shoot over, and Richards came from behind as a weak side shot blocker. That was just excellent defense by Tyrese Maxey, an underrated defender. The lob off the inbounds, Wiley inside off the glass. This Auburn team, Dan, does a great job on out-of-bounds under. That was a, a four low along the baseline, just a cross screen from one side of the lane to the other. First time these two programs have met since the Elite Eight last year when Auburn won in overtime, taking the Tigers to the Final Four for the first time in a program history. Meanwhile, Emmanuel quickly with a bucket and a foul for Kentucky. Just a screen across, a little cross screen from block to block, and Austin Wiley, oh, this was the last play, quickly in the post. They are going right after Javon McCormick, who is a small player. They're gonna try to make him finish over. They don't wanna foul him and don't wanna give an open shot. Make him finish at the rim, which they did on that last play, and then clearly they're gonna try to, to bully him if they can take him down in the post. Go ahead and do that. And how about quickly the last nine games averaging almost 17 points per game. Kentucky's got four players who on the season average between 13 and 15 points per game. Okoro too short and down with the rebound is Maxi. Richards changed that coming over from the weak side to block it. Hagens for three. Wow. And what a start for the guards. Maxi a three. Hagens a three. And quickly a three-point play. And this for a team that... We've questioned their ability to shoot it, and they are knocking down shots left and right. They're shooting much better in SEC play, though. And Samir Dowdy fouled on a three-point attempt. Ashton Hagens is one of the best point guards in the country and one of the best defensive point guards, but he starts knocking this shot down. Forget it. I mean, he shoots 31% from three. That's his 13th three on the season. You're not going to find a, a player that is better on the defensive end, both on and off the ball, than Ashton Hagens has been. I think he's the front runner for National Defensive Player of the Year. He made some incredible defensive plays last week in the Winnipeg, Texas Tech. And, and he made some plays the last time I saw him in person was at Georgia. And the plays he made, he turned complete advantage situations for Georgia into buckets for Kentucky. It was remarkable. Three, four times he turned layups for Georgia into a layup for Kentucky. And two minutes into the game, it's already 9-5. to five. Kentucky with the early advantage. A turnover as Okoro takes it away, and here come the Tigers. Dowdy in transition. Got a mismatch with Montgomery on him, and he's fouled on the drive. Smart play by Samir Dowdy. He had the mismatch with E.J. Montgomery picking him up in transition. But Isaac Okoro does such a good job of making winning plays. Look how he got back in front of the ball after Hagens was able to get past. And he does gets down on the floor, winds up getting the ball, and then starts the break on his back. He just makes winning plays. And that's you're not gonna find many freshmen that do it like he does. He's yeah, a he, good player. He's out, sorry, Jay. He's out there with four seniors, but Bruce Pearl thinks he's so advanced for his age that he calls him a not a freshman, he calls him a, a senior. So you got one for senior and four seniors out there for Auburn, and everybody in the coaching staff says Okoro is just all about winning. Well, Kentucky is doing an awfully good job covering up for sometimes having a defensive mistake. Nick Richards switches out, and then you saw E.J. Montgomery come over and pick up the roll man, and that was a great job blocking the shot. When he picked up the roll, that was a foul. I mean, you can't just bump a roller like he did, but the officials missed it, so give all the credit to E.J. Montgomery. So Wiley goes to the bench with his first. Anthony McLemore checks in off the bench, and this really changes the look for Auburn. McLemore's not nearly as big as Wiley, but he's a stretch five at the offensive end. Yeah, he can really shoot. He also blocks shots at the yeah. rim, but he's more of a weak side shot blocker. Maxey with a floater won't go. Richards rejected, but a foul is called. That's the problem. Richards is doing such a good job on the offensive glass of not surrendering to a blockout. So you can get a body on him, 
but he is not going to stop moving because of that body. And the body just with McLemore a little bit too small there. He was able to wedge McLemore under the basket and still get that offensive board. Not much doubt about that foul, was there? So a good opportunity to talk about this incredible run that Nick Richards has been on in the running for sure for SEC Player of the Year, playing with a ton more confidence, scoring, rebounding, blocking shots, and one of the best field goal percentages in the nation. And he was up and down at the start of the year, and then Kentucky wound up playing back-to-back -back in Las Vegas, Utah and Ohio State. Lost both games. In those two games, Nick Richards had seven points, four rebounds, and eight fouls combined in those 80 minutes. Since then, he's been magnificent. Nine games since, 17 points, 10 rebounds, 66% from the field, couple of blocks per game. Really just tremendous performances consistently. Coro passed up the three. And now Dowdy with a shot clock under 10. And Kentucky's turned them into individual offensive players now. They're not able to run anything. Tough shot, kind of a step back three there by Samir Dowdy, who has not been shooting the ball well lately. In the last five games, Dowdy's 5 of 27 from 3. That's under 20%. And if he's going to take shots like that, that percentage is not going to go back up. Ashton Higgins running off some screens down low. Now he's going to get a high ball screen. That's a fist action. Maxi, tough fadeaway on the baseline. Won't go over the rebound down to McCormick. Actually, it was a four-on-three there briefly for Auburn, but they don't take advantage in transition. Yeah, good transition defense. One by Hagans is stopping the ball, but everybody ran back and had a sense of urgency. McLemore inside, Okoro. And he is held and fouled before the shot attempt. So it'll be Auburn the ball when we come back. Also, when we come back, inside the rivalry between Auburn and Kentucky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. With more ways to file, it's better with Block. And in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. Aerial coverage is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to a State Farm agent today. Let's take a look now at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster as we go inside the rivalry between Kentucky and Auburn, which has been dominated historically by Kentucky. 94 wins and 20 losses for the Wildcats all time, but a lot closer recently since 2016. It's three up and three down, and the most important game in which these two programs have competed against one another, of course, came in the Elite Eight last year when Auburn defeated Kentucky in overtime, advancing on to the Final Four, where the Tigers were knocked out of the national semifinal by the eventual national champions, the Virginia Cavaliers. Two really good programs. I mean, Bruce Pearl, now in his sixth year here in Auburn, he's got the, the students, Excited. He's got sellout crowds. He's got a final four under his belt right now. I think the only thing as high as the energy level of the students here today is the energy level of the two coaches, Bruce Pearl and John Calipari. Yeah, they bring it every day, both in practice, film. Had an opportunity to sit in film session and scouting yesterday with Auburn. And it is a well-prepared team, but their problem is they're playing another well-prepared team. What a rebound. A well-prepared team in Kentucky. There's Devin Cambridge, a freshman from Nashville, down with a rebound for Auburn. And he is an elite athlete, Devin Cambridge. That was a big-time rebound. How about this? In his last three games, he scored 26 points. They were all in the same game. 26 against South Carolina. Hasn't scored at all in the last two games. Well, Isaac Okoro, with all these switches that are going on, Isaac Okoro needs to get into the post. He can do some damage there. They missed him when he was there. McCormick over Richards. And out of bounds, it'll be Kentucky ball. Let's take a look right here at Isaac Okoro on this out-of-bounds play. Now, Okoro right here, he's going to... He's going to refuse this ball screen. So instead of going around the ball screen, he's just going to take it and then spin off Sestina and get right to the rim. That was off the out-of-bounds play. He just popped up to the elbow, then was going to get a little 
elbow to elbow ball screen, turned it down, and was able to get all the way to the rim in isolation. That was just an excellent play by Isaac Okoro. I think you're going to see Bruce Pearl use him a lot in ball screens in this ball game. Quickly, tough shot over Okoro, and the rebound down to Doughty. Doughty with a full head of steam. It won't go, but he does draw the foul. But Doughty looked like a running back going through the line. He was protecting the ball and then used his left arm almost as a, a shield to get the defender, Emmanuel, quickly off of him. So Not quite a stiff foul. arm. Not quite a stiff <laughs> arm, but close. Tough guy, Philadelphia kid, played at VCU, transferred to Auburn. And guys like McCormick and Dowdy in bigger roles this year. Yeah, Bruce Pearl has some key players back for the Final Four team, but he lost some great players, Harper, Brown, Okiki among them. So a lot of the guys who were back, Jay, are in much bigger roles than they were a year ago. Absolutely. Lost Horace Spencer and Malik Dunbar as well yeah. from a team that made five, uh, 454 three-point shots last year. That's remarkable. That's over 11 a game. And this year, they're nowhere near the shooting team, but very good defensively. They don't turn you over quite as much as they did last year. They play differently, but still hard to beat. Remember, they started the year 15-0. They were the next-to-last undefeated team. Rose as high as fourth in the rankings. But Bruce Pearl kept saying, yeah, I know we're winning games, but we're not where we need to be. And sure enough, they would go on to lose a couple of games in conference play back-to-back -back recently at Alabama and at Florida. Boy, Okoro's got talent. He has talent, and he's got a great sense of how to play. And as soon as he gets a, a reliable jump shot, he's going to be unguardable. Unguardable. He's showing up in mock drafts as a potential lottery pick. And another Kentucky foul. One of the things that Okoro does really well, he's just an elite defender. And he's coming off a 14.9 rebound game against Ole Miss, where they were down 19. But he's strong. He's a good athlete but he can really drive the ball. And, and he's driving it without having a jump shot that makes you press up on him. So if you got to start pressing up on him, then he's going to just blow by people. Let's bring in Holly Rowe. Well, yesterday at practice, John Calipari warned his Kentucky team that, listen, this is not football with the Super Bowl looming. He did not want these guys being too physical and getting fouls called. They have put Auburn on the line now to take the lead in this game, and most of those points have come from the free throw line. That's exactly what Calipari did not want yesterday with his team. All right, Holly, thank you. Dowdy's already seven for seven from the line, and he just buried a three. And it's a 9-0 run for the Tigers. You come into this environment, you have to be physical. You just don't want a, a foul. I mean, playing physical and fouling are two different things. You don't want to reach. But Kentucky's got to accept the physical challenge that uh, this Auburn team is going to present because these guys are athletes and they're tough. Kentucky going left and right, but not north and south right now. Maxi air ball on the three. Ball is live, but it belongs to Auburn. A shot clock violation. Yeah. They need to, yeah, they, okay, the referee's got it there. I mean, by the time the ball was saved, it was a violation. Samir Doughty did such a nice job of stepping in rhythm. Little turnover, just Ashton Higgins lost the ball and then just ran out of the play, and Samir Doughty just came down in rhythm, was able to step into that three rather than take a challenge three, which he's done earlier in the game. Doughty's got as many points as Kentucky right now. Okoro into the chest of Montgomery, out of bounds to Auburn. That's just a little set that Auburn runs to get Okoro isolated on that elbow and gives him the opportunity to drive. He can either drive it left down the lane or go right and get into the middle of the lane. See what they run here, this 1-4 low, if they're going to go set that cross screen again. And they get it into the freshman, Alan Flanagan. A Coro for three. Hesitated. He's a 26% three-point shooter. Wiley with a great offensive rebound, but then airmailed it over the head of Dowdy. And yeah. Dowdy is saying, and Wiley saying as well, that he got a hit on the arm. That's why that pass sailed. Pleading his case with one of the officials to no avail. No Hagens right now, Jay, for Kentucky. Now, if Tyrese Maxey can run the point. Quickly, also an excellent ball handler. 
Actually, the penetration loves the floater, misses with a left hand, but we get a foul call. Tyrese Maxey always wants to go baseline. It's tempting to try to make him go left every time, but he can go left. And you just want to keep him from going baseline where he can. He is such a good driver of the ball. And I think as he refines the shot that he has, if you notice when he shoots it, he shoots a flat ball because he shoots the ball more out than up. But when he starts shooting the ball more up, he, he's got a good stroke. He's going to be an excellent shooter. And a big second half Wednesday night as Kentucky came back against Vanderbilt. They were having all kinds of trouble at Rupp against the Commodores. Jerry Stackhouse's team played hard before Kentucky finally prevailed in the end. Of course, Vanderbilt, with all the injuries they've had the last two years, lost 25 conference games in a row. Yeah. Quickly in transition, Montgomery has it knocked away. It'll be out of bounds to Kentucky. When do we come back? Two-point lead for Auburn in the early going. When do we come back? Bruce Pearl's going 94 feet with Jay Billis. What's great is when they're talkative, you only have to answer one question. <laughs> Just one. And he qualifies? <laughs> Bruce, what was your first car? It was a 1972 Monte Carlo. Oh, color. It was kind of gold, and it looked a lot like the car that Davy Allison drove in the, in the, I guess you'd call it NASCAR now. Did you pay for it yourself? 1,500 bucks, uh, oh, okay. shoveled snow, cut grass, have my own lawn care business. You had your own lawn care business? It was, I figured out it was a lot easier to cut grass myself and get a couple of other guys to cut grass too and make a few dollars. Now you went to Boston College and I'm told you were the mascot in a game. How'd you become the mascot? One game. I was a mascot for one game. You know, once you're a mascot for one game, you're always a mascot, right? The, the Eagle got sick. And I was a manager for Dr. Tom Davis, 1981, Frank Johnson, Ray McCallum playing in NCAA tournament Tuscaloosa. He said, send the uniform. I got a guy on the bench that I know can put this thing on. If it doesn't work out in coaching, you think you could do the mascot, you'd be the tiger? We always have to have, you look in coaching, when you're winning, they're worried you're going to leave. And when you're losing, they're packing your bag. So we're always coming to win. You have to have a backup player. 94 feet. We've seen him breath sweat through a suit. Imagine how sweaty he was in the mascot's costume when he was doing that. Let's take a look at the transformation of the Auburn program under Bruce Pearl, year six, as we mentioned for Bruce. 92 wins in the last four years. This senior class will be the winningest class in Auburn history, and most notably again, making it to the final four last season. And, by the way, the Kansas, North Carolina, and Kentucky on their way to the final four. Just a remarkable season. Great job that last possession by Austin Wiley to stay between Nick Richards and the basket. Didn't give him an angle, made him try to score over. Wiley's open, give him the ball. McCormick looked in his direction, couldn't get it in there. Now they'll reset. That's good pressure on the ball by Ashton Hagens to take away his vision. Flanagan spinning into the paint. And a foul going against Auburn. Got Wiley with a push. That's number two on Austin Wiley. Tonight, it's the Men's Australian Open Final. It'll be Novak Djokovic and Dominic Team, 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 12.30 a.m. Pacific Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Team looking for his first major championship. It won't be easy, obviously, against one of the greatest players that tennis has ever seen. Higgins turns it over. Numbers for Auburn. I don't know if Okoro knows it. Tried to do it himself. And it winds up in the hands of Maxi. Oh, what a block by McCormick. A little Euro step by Maxi, and McCormick just read that perfectly. And the little guy blocked it with the left hand right out of Maxi's hand. Watch this block. That is spectacular. McCormick's house of leather. <laughs> All ball. What a block. For McCormick, his second block of the season. And that one will be memorable. Yeah, this was a basket saving block because that was a, an easy score, get fouled, or both opportunity and was able to keep from making body contact and took it right out of his hands. Meanwhile, as we mentioned, Austin Wiley picked up his second foul. He's gone to the bench, and Anthony McLemore is back in. So they are smaller, but they do have one more shooter on the floor. Hagen's good pressure there by McLemore. Yeah, they got it. They got yeah. it. They called it. 
Hagan saying he was fouled. John Calipari saying he was fouled. Now, Auburn makes it so difficult just to get the ball in bounds. Of the teams over the years I've seen of defending out of bounds underneath, the two best have been Bruce Pearl coach teams when he was at Tennessee and now at Auburn, and then Davidson under Bob McKillop. Nice drop step. Macklemore misses off the glass, and down with the rebound is Keanu Brooks Jr., the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Kentucky is down to an eight-man rotation, basically, because Khalil Whitney left the program last week. Even though it's past the start of the semester, if he used to continue in college basketball, he won't be able to start in the middle of next year, but he has left the program, so John Calipari's really got eight guys at his disposal now, Jay. I don't know that Khalil Whitney's even going to stay in college. Yeah. My guess is he'll go pro. So extra minutes for Johnny Juzang, among others. And the freshman from Los Angeles knocks down a corner three. Well, you'd better be prepared for the entire 30 seconds. And Juzang did a great job of having his feet set and ready to shoot as the ball arrived. Got a switch. First field goal in more than eight minutes for Kentucky after they got out of the gates quickly. And Johnny Juzang has done a really nice job of hanging in there. He wasn't getting a lot of playing time early in the season. Hasn't been shooting the ball well, but he is an outstanding shooter. What a great fake. And Hagen's called for the foul. Watch Juzang here in the corner. He's calling for the ball. He knows is open. And when his man helps off, and that was Jamal Johnson helping off, he knew that he was going to be open, repositioned himself in the corner and caught it in rhythm and was ready to shoot when the ball arrives. He's catching it to shoot and then make the closeout take it away. And here's a big loss for Kentucky in spite of the fact he hasn't been at his best so far, but two on Ashton Hagens, and he goes to the bench with better than nine minutes left in the half. And four turnovers for Ashton Hagens. That is unusual. McCormick with a good look. And Richards down with a rebound. That might have been a good one to shot fake and drive because Maxey was closing out in a hurry on the corner. So quickly we'll do more of the ball handling with Hagens on the bench. Maxey will help as well. Good help. Flanagan called for the foul, and now the Auburn players are incensed with the call. Well, that was just a smart play by Emmanuel quickly. He had a step. And he went right into the arms of Flanagan to pick up that foul. Flanagan's hands were up. Now watch, he gets the step, and then he just went right into his body. Now so you might say that's offense-initiated contact, but Flanagan wasn't in legal guarding position, so quickly can do whatever he wants to get to the basket as long as he doesn't push off. John Calipari said Emmanuel quickly is in the gym about as much as any player that he has coached at Kentucky, drawing comparisons to guys like Tyler Hero and Shea Gilgis Alexander both thriving now with the NBA. Watch him shoot free throws. He'll close his eyes before each free throw attempt. Well, he didn't do it this time. Except for that one. Yeah, he's been doing that. <laughs> he started doing it against Louisville. He closes yeah. eyes and visualize. Maybe you missed one. Yeah, he's I, a great free throw shooter. I find some of your best analysis is with your eyes. Nice right screen. Down. But an easy miss there underneath. Devin Cambridge had an easy reverse but couldn't finish it. It was just a little lifted flex action with a back pick along the baseline side. And you're not going to get much more open than that. That should have been two points for Auburn. Brooks. Left hand, got it. And Keon Brooks has been struggling the last two games. He played 18 minutes, didn't score. That's his first bucket in a couple of games. Well, I'll tell you, McLemore is flying down the court when Auburn gets the ball, making Richards run with him. And now he air balls a three. But it'll stay with Auburn with 7.52 to go in the first half. Kentucky led early, then Auburn. Now the Cats back on top. The only guys working harder than the players today might be the two coaches here in Auburn. As we mentioned, great energy from both coaches, great motivators as well. Here's what it's like to play for the likes of John Calipari and Bruce Pearl. We're trying to win. If you don't want to win, go in the locker room. Okay, can we get that on tape? All right, let's go, let's go. Game day, game day. You can absolutely be hearing my voice, but not listen to a thing I'm saying. Not going to be able to help you if you're not listening. Our purpose all year long is to keep getting better. Look, they're good. 
So are we. Adversity, yep. it reveals character. You don't have to make them all, but you can't miss them. All, just take a shot. Got him, bang, 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 bang. Enjoy the wins, man. Enjoy the wins. Freedom! It's always amazing, Jay, when the guys who have been at it as long as these two guys have been still have as much energy as they do every single day. Well, they love it. They love teaching. They love competing. Boy, they got to replay that. They're going to they're gonna take a look and see whether that was a flagrant foul. When Samir Dowdy was past the ball, it looked like he caught Nick Richards right in the, right in the face on the reversal. Yeah, that looked inadvertent. But it might not matter. But that was, he was just making a pass. Yeah, it called for a common, common foul on the floor. They're reviewing it for possible flagrant. And anytime you get an elbow or a forearm up above the shoulder level, it's almost automatic. Well, but at least the key, have a look at it. Yeah, the key is, were his arms more up, and Dowdy's arms, more right. up than out. Right. If they were more out than up, it'll probably be a flagrant. And Samir Dowdy's saying, come on, man, he faked that. That didn't touch him. And so this is a common foul. Yeah. So a common foul on Dowdy and the ball over to Kentucky, leading by five. 7.46 to go here in the first half. First meeting of two here in the regular season between Kentucky and Auburn. And right now, I'm not sure there's anybody on the floor that has a great opportunity to guard Nick Richards. And you'd like to see Kentucky get Richards a little bit more involved on the offensive end. Because thus far, Auburn has had a tough time scoring. They're 3 of 16 from the field. 10 of the 14 Auburn points have come from Samir Doughty. Richards, without a field goal, he's got one free throw, 1.2 rebounds, and they're going right into him, but he can't convert. Just isolating the low post, but a nice job by McLemore to stay between him and the basket. Now McLemore's doing a good job posting up. But a travel called up top on McCormick. Let's listen in a little bit earlier in the game. Bruce Pearl wired in the huddle. Go, go, go! Go, give it to him! Give it! Give it! You've got to throw the ball up the floor. Throw it to Amphrey. Throw it up the floor. Yeah, Bruce Pearl talking to Bruce Pearl talking to his guards about advanced passing, not just dribbling it up the court but pass it up the court. They'll have a better opportunity to get something in transition. Advanced passing rather than dribbling up the floor. Jay, they don't have a point in six and a half minutes. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, a, that's been happening. And especially happened against Ole Miss. There have been droughts that they've had. The key is, can they hang in there when they're having a drought? Because it's not a great offensive team. Yeah. Well, everybody... But Dowdy is having a drought right now. He's got 12 of their 16 points. He's also got another foul. He just picked up a foul trying to trail Emmanuel quickly coming off a baseline screen. And right now, Stephen Pearl is telling Samir that let it go. It's just your second foul. Emmanuel quickly coming off that screen, then stops. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, it it's a smart play by Quickly. I don't know if that was much of a foul. It's a good stop cut. Now, Dowdy with two, but he will stay in the game. Remember, Wiley has been on the bench for a while with two, but Dowdy's all their offense right now, so Bruce Pearl will trust him to play through the foul trouble. And Wiley back in. Well, you've got to trust a senior because... You know, oftentimes when you get two fouls, a lot of coaches will take the player out. And they're playing the best defense on their best player that any defense could by putting them on the bench. A lot of dribbling up top by McCormick. Can't get around Maxie. Good D. And Maxie does a good job. And McCormick has a hard time seeing over Maxie because he's bigger and longer. 
three. Dangel Purifoy not there. Great rebound, Okoro, and a foul. Nobody put a body on Isaac Okoro. And Okoro averages about two offensive rebounds per game. Almost half of his rebounding output is on the offensive end. Okoro comes all the way in from the wing, and nobody even turns their head to find out where he is. Everybody thinking they're just going to jump for the rebound. And Okoro, with nobody botting him up, is going to have a free run. And the offense gets to follow the flight of the ball. Defense has to turn and block out. From Powder Springs, Georgia, Bruce Pearl got him over the likes of Georgia, Florida State, and others. And he has been a tremendous help. Remember all the good players we talked about they lost for the Final Four team. Okoro has stepped in and had a pretty terrific freshman season so far. I don't know if Auburn knows what they're in defensively. There was some confusion there at the defensive end, maybe between man and zone, or Dowdy didn't seem to know who he was covering. And you can see him now, right now questioning Purifoy, and it led to a wide-open three. Yeah, they had no idea what they were in. Just a miscommunication. There's that flex cut. Dowdy, two more. Good poise by Samir Dowdy. He could have tried to give it off to Wiley, turned it over or walk with it, but he showed very good poise and finished with that left hand. Dowdy's kind of still barking about what happened on the last possession. Now he finds himself guarding quickly. And now they know they're in man-to-man. -man. Yeah. Hagan's on the bench with two. Quickly baseline, can't get the shot off. Brooks from the elbow. Yes, that's really his shot. Keon Brooks is a very good mid-range shooter. And he's just been not, he hasn't been playing as well over the last few games. He's got a good stroke from 15 feet and in. And he's got a bigger opportunity now, right? Right with uh, Whitney out of the program. Another block. No, it's a goaltend. Two more points for Dowdy. Dowdy with the nice little runner in the lane. Was able to just put the brakes on and let quickly fly by. And that was picked off right in front of the rim. So on, on the way down. So Dowdy's now got 16 of Auburn's 21 points. And even though Auburn has had a tough time shooting a decent percentage, they're still just two possessions down. Quickly off the screen. Good fake. Didn't get the foul call. He should have. Good job by Wiley to run down and get a good post. Purifoy steps into the three. Wiley with the offensive rebound and draws the foul. I think Wiley made that by the fact he had a great rim run and then tried to seal his defender right in the lane. He occupied the defense. Then when the shot by Purifoy went up, that gave him some great positioning and leverage to go up and get the ball. And Wiley's really taken a step forward at the line this year. 52% in his career before this season, 70% as a senior. Well, I was really surprised they didn't call a foul when Emmanuel quickly was shooting on that other end. One of two. He tries to turn the corner. Wow. Boy, he'll put up more of that type of shot maybe than anybody in college basketball. That mid-range floater. Just when he gets downhill and the screens are being set much higher. So it gives him the room to go north-south instead of east-west. Got away with a the walk there. Purifoy with a runner at the other end. A nice play by Daniel Purifoy, who is more of a three-point shooter than he is inside of two. But just a mismatch that can really stretch the floor. Well, they're running Tyrese Maxey off all kinds of screens and actions. Now here's the high ball screen. Look how high it is. Can't reach. Number three on Wiley. How big is that? You just have to move your feet. You cannot reach. But Tyrese Maxey 
He can come off screens, constant motion. And when he gets downhill, he is a shot maker. That's a beautiful little floater. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Carhawk Classic, only at Sonic. Game day coming to Auburn for the first time ever. Terrific atmosphere this morning as the students pack their way here into Auburn Arena for the show. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, LaFonso Ellis will look at the Zags and the Jayhawks hanging on and a slew of upsets for favored teams on their home court today in the Big East. Holly is with Coach and Fonz. Well, they will also break down this game. And, Coach, you really like the defense that's been playing so far. What's impressive? They're taking the big guys out of the game because ball pressure buys time to pressure on the basketball. You can't feed the post. So what do you got to do? You got to drive it. These guards are going to be making plays because they can't throw it to the bigs. Offensive, you, you like that, that they've been able to get downhill a little bit. Yeah, Kentucky's done a really nice job of getting in the lane, being able to kick out for some threes, but also being able to score. But when the bigs of Kentucky catch that basketball two feet in the paint, they've got to score to rock. That's right. The big men have been shut out a little bit. they got to get going here. You yeah. can always feed the post. <laughs> there is never a time the ball cannot go into the post. That's not what Coach K said during your playing days. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> you could tell Lafonso was a big guy. Seth Greenberg was a guard. Don't throw it in there. None of the big guys for Kentucky have a field goal yet in this game. Richards, Montgomery, or Sestina. And again, Austin Wiley picked up a foul just before the last timeout. His third. He's back on the bench. And Johnny Juzang picks up a, a foul there because he got caught on the low side and did a great job by McLemore of you know, really holding him off in the low post when they got the switch. McLemore, the lefty at the line for Auburn. Excellent student. Already has picked up his degree in finance. Now pursuing a master's degree. He's recruited by both MIT and Harvard. The stroke's a little funky. You see it from beyond the arc as well, but the ball goes in the basket. Gets the shot off in a hurry from beyond the three-point line. Yeah, both he and Purifoy can step away and really stretch a defense, pull a big guy away from the basket. A little pressure here. This has not been a pressing team throughout the course of the year. And really, Kentucky doing a pretty good job with Ashton Hagens on the bench with those two fouls. And Hagens had been turning the ball over when he was in there anyway, but both quickly and Maxi really doing a nice job. Here's another high ball. Wow. Look at that split. What a job by Tyrese Maxi. Boy, this high ball screen is being set so far out. I'm not sure that you need to stay that connected to the big guy, but they are just taking whoever's playing the five spot. Just an overcommit by Anthony McLemore instead of staying connected to the screener. And a beautiful split of the defenders by Tyrese Maxi. Was it a technical foul here on Bruce Pearl? We, uh, I believe we have a technical foul called on Bruce Pearl. He wants to be thrown out. He's saying, throw me out. And from our understanding, what we're being told is it was a coach's box violation. Now, usually, if not always, you get a warning for that before you get the tech. That's what he was saying. Yeah. He said, I thought you get a warning. So he's also saying, throw me out. <laughs> Remember, John Calipari got thrown out a couple of weeks ago in a game down at Arkansas. Yeah, his team played better. <laughs> they really responded. <laughs> no, not better because he's out, but they really responded. Yeah. And they were down, I believe, to Arkansas. And you know, Maxie quickly, Hagans just... Did a terrific job down the stretch, as did Nick Richards. So it's a four-point trip for the Cats, all at the line. Well, Maxi is really good now, but he's going to be a big-time player. Burrow with Richards on him. They got a switch, so he needs to take advantage of it. He's trying. 
A foul. Wow, a hard foul there by Quickly, and Jamal Johnson will go to the line for three. I don't know what the urgency was. Well, you want to close out, get a hand up, make the shot difficult. But there was really no reason. And he, he knew it when he was going up. He knew he didn't have the angle. Johnson, a redshirt sophomore, a transfer from Memphis. <laughs> you wonder sometimes in coaching clinics or with young young coaches <laughs> if they have a if they have sort of a clinic portion when they they say all right and then when something like that happens when you have nothing to say you say what are you doing <laughs> and just punch your fist in yeah. the air. Yeah. Every coach yeah. says that they say what are you doing <laughs> and the player of course doesn't know what they're doing right. or they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Three point game. And a steal by Purifoy. Now that's where Ashton Hagen's being in the ball game. You would hope a point guard with experience would not have made that pass. Because what were you, what are you going to do with it when you catch it? Johnson fouled again, this time by Juzang. Where the closeouts for Kentucky in the last several possessions have not been good because they've essentially been flybys. And when you do a flyby like that, you're taking yourself out of the play. And so Juzang was late getting to the ball, wound up fouling, and putting a team that is struggling to score in the half court on the line where they can score with no defense. And this is something you don't see all that often, a guy coming back into the game this late in the half with two fouls. Usually if you can get through this many minutes without him, you leave him out, but John Calipari doesn't like the way this one's going right now. Yeah, you have to put your quarterback back in the ball game to settle things down and get some better decisions because you have to expect that Auburn's going to continue to come with pressure. There is pressure, but they get it over. Boy, Maxi, quick release on the three. Richards the rebound. Hagen's a three. With box out by Purifoy. They can tie or take the lead. Almost a walk. Good ball movement. Okoro baseline, but he was standing out of bounds when he caught the pass. But Kentucky really needs to be more disciplined on closeouts. Right now, they're flying all over the place. And they need to just stay down and stay in front and get a hand up. A one, two, two, three quarter court pressure right now. Ball screen Richards. Now Maxi sends him away. Maxi wanted to drive on Purifoy. Purifoy rejects another one. When McCormick passed ahead, that was a good advance pass. The problem was he passed it to McLemore too early. We got mismatches right now. Okoro. Johnson. Great rebound by McLemore and another Kentucky foul. Boy, this small lineup that Bruce Pearl is employing, in part because Austin Wiley's in foul trouble, has been successful. They've been harder to guard, they've spread the floor, they're driving it, and they have been hard to block out. Boy, Coach Pearl is hot under the collar right now, isn't he? He doesn't have a collar. <laughs> By the way, you see the T-shirts that Bruce Pearl, the coaching staff, and all the students are wearing. That is a program that Bruce Pearl started when he was the coach at Tennessee in honor of Chris Lofton, a great player for the Volunteers who beat cancer. It's called Outlib, and when Bruce Pearl came to Auburn, they just traded out the O, brought in the A, A-U, Auburn, still called it Outlib, and it's a program that is designed to raise awareness for cancer prevention and detection and also donates money to the families of people fighting cancer and local hospitals. McCormick. Another great rebound by McLemore. Well, Keon Brooks, what a great steal out of that 1-2-2. Two, two. But Keon Brooks was in the middle, and he was hiding in there. You have to be an outlet and a target and want the ball. He clearly did not want the ball there. That led to the turnover. 
Purifoy for three. Yes! This press has been effective. The small lineup has been effective. Maxi knocks one down. What a big answer. A huge answer by Tyrese Maxey. He is a player, man. A big game player. So they trade threes in the closing seconds of the first half, and Kentucky will come off the court leading by one. Holly's with John Calipari. Well, Coach, you have to absorb a lot of that first half with Ashton Hagens on the bench. What, how did that impact you? It's hard. You saw our freshman throw it away. We, play, we don't go back and forth versus the press. That's when he was in high school. I need Ashton back. Thank you. They need Ashton back. They got a one-point lead at the half. What an atmosphere. What a good first half here between Kentucky and Auburn in a big game in the SEC. 35-34, Kentucky leads. We'll send you to the Jeep Halftime Report with Reese and the guys right after these messages here at Auburn Arena. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime, presented by H&R Block. This is an ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. A lot of energy, a lot of intensity in the first half here in Auburn. Samir Doughty carrying Auburn's offense, really, for the first 10 minutes or so of the game. A little bit more balance for Kentucky, though not, not all that much. Tyrese Maxey had a dozen. Emmanuel quickly had a dozen as well. Ashton Hagens spent a lot of time on the bench with foul trouble for the Cats. Welcome back to Auburn Arena. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, what do you think? Intense. Just a hard-played, intense first half for Kentucky. Kentucky's got to do a better job of defending without fouling. Because Auburn is shooting such a low percentage against Kentucky's defense, you cannot foul them and put them at the free throw line. They're 14, uh, excuse me, there were 20 free throws shot by Auburn in that first half. That's just too many. And Auburn's got to do a better job of guarding the ball. They've got to square up. Uh, Bruce Pearl calls it framing. They've got to stay in front of the ball and not give up these drives off the high ball screen, do a better job of staying connected. But this is a very good defensive team. This is going to be decided by rebounds, loose balls, things like that, because we're not going to get great shooting percentage yeah. out of this one. Let's hear from Holly Rowe. Auburn coach Bruce Burrell said there's been too many empty possessions for us. We've done a great job getting fast breaks, and then we don't initiate our offense and don't get into something to run good action. He said we have got to come away with better possessions, no more empty possessions here in the second half. He's like, if the fast break's there and we can make it happen, great. But if we can't, we've got to run something and run it efficiently. Guys? Holly, thank you. One point game, Kentucky leading going to the second half. Each of these teams looking up at LSU atop the SEC standings. We're ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, the first time ever that game day has come to Auburn. Students are behind us, they're fired up, and as Jay said, a very intense first half. A foul before the shot, and we talked about it in the first half, when Isaac Okoro makes his mind up to drive into the paint, something good is probably going to happen for Auburn. Just a little dribble handoff where he can turn the corner and get to that right hand, get all the way into the lane, and doing it again. Now he's got a switch. Pass is deflected by Maxey. McLemore starts the second half for Wiley, who's got three fouls, and Auburn takes the lead thanks to Purifoy. Well, Bruce Pearl clearly liked what he saw out of his smaller lineup with Wiley out with those three fouls, going to stick with it. It is a much quicker lineup, and they can really spread the floor more. What about Kentucky getting Richards involved? Well, they got to get him the ball. I mean, it, they've been really good off that high ball screen. Wow, Max, or quickly rather, knocks down the three. Quickly is emerging as a great player. He can shoot it, he can put it on the deck, and he's an excellent defender. He did a really good job earlier this year when he was guarding Jordan Wara when they wound up beating, uh, beating Louisville in overtime. Dowdy, the high score in the game, and after a switch, he's got E.J. Montgomery on him. Shot clock at five. It'll be Purifoy again. A good block out by Quickly on Anthony McLemore. Kept him off the glass. Nobody guarding Quickly. And he misses the wide open three. And Auburn was very fortunate there. You don't get that much time to shoot a three in a horse game. 
John Calipari didn't always have the three guards starting together. Earlier on, it was Whitney who's left the program, or Brooks, but Hagen's Maxi and quickly have been starting in recent games together. Still to come, more college basketball action. There will be better than 31,000 people at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Trey Jones and Duke are there to take on the Orange. Duke's going to have to guard two of the best offensive players in the ACC. Buddy Beheim, one of the best shooters, and Elijah Hughes, who's averaging just under 20 points per game. Wendell Moore is back from the broken bone in his hand. He returns tonight for Duke. That foul on quickly, by the way, his third. He's gone to the bench. Juzang is back in. McLemore working hard. Just caught Kentucky on a switch and rolled Anthony McLemore down into the low post. Great feed. Pass. And another one. Two beautiful passes and a dunk for Richards. Well, usually a big guy like E.J. Montgomery catches that ball on a cut. They're going to shoot it or turn it over. But that little under-the-shoulder pass, that was a backhanded scoop to Nick Richards. What a beautiful pass. That's the first bucket of the night for Richards. Now Hagens nearly comes up with a steal. Well, you have to know where Ashton Hagens is all the time on the floor. He's like a great safety in football. Okoro short on the three, rebound Maxi. Smart play by Dowdy not to go after that rebound. That could have been foul number three. Double drag up top, then a roll and pop. And E.J. Montgomery with just his second made three-pointer on the season. Well, they called it a two. My mistake. Put on the line a long two for Montgomery. Kentucky leads by three. Well, that was a big play by E.J. Montgomery, who had been struggling a bit on the offensive end. With nine points in the game against Vandy. And he needs to become a more consistent scorer. Dowdy going to work on him, and a great block by Montgomery. Juzang from the baseline, well short. That is a tough shot in that little short corner, especially for a three-point shooter like Juzang. Look at the speed from McCormick, and he's headed to the free throw line. Now take a look at these screens by Montgomery and Richards. This is called a double drag. And so you're going to see Montgomery pop and then a roll right here. And the pop out top, you went with the roll man, and you wind up getting the guy popping, E.J. Montgomery, for an easy shot and a wide open shot. R really well run by Kentucky. They traded the lead back and forth here in the opening minutes of the second half. Javon McCormick at the line for Auburn. And McCormick has done a really good job this year stepping into the point, the point guard position that was left vacant by Jared Harper when he decided to go pro early. The only issue with McCormick is he's awfully small. So coming off screen rolls, it's hard for him to deliver the pass over bigger defenders. Stick him with the 1 2 2 three quarter court pressure. Dowdy up top. Hagens end to end. And Richards thought about it, but the ball was still on the cylinder, so he let it go. Great outlet pass. Okoro, the crossover. Okoro, no, but the follow will go. He got fouled. Hagens lays it in. Kentucky back on top. Boy, there is contact throughout this game. You had better be ready for a physical confrontation when you take the ball to the basket. And nobody's walking the ball up the court, are they? McCormick at the other end. Nobody picked the ball up, and McCormick took advantage of it. What a beautiful finish. Juzang. Good defense by Dowdy. It'll be Auburn ball when we come back. The intensity and the pace, if possible, have even picked up. Here in the early stages of the second half, the lead going back and forth between the Tigers and the Cats. He's a, just a spectacular basketball player. Remarkable. And Holly, you're going to be there as part of our coverage. That's right. And I can't wait because Sabrina Ionesco, as a freshman, willed her team to an Elite Eight appearance for the first time with Oregon. But they got run by UConn. This is her chance for unfinished business. She didn't turn pro for this opportunity like this.
Looking forward to that one and really enjoying this one. Bucket and a foul as Wiley extends the lead for Auburn. Bruce Pearl going to Tom Davis offense. Little baseline flex action. And when they came off the down screen, Samir Doughty was able to turn the corner and get to the rim. And it looks like Tyrese Maxey might have injured his hand there, holding that right, I'm not sure it was right or left hand, but. And it's number three on Hagen. So they got a problem with a foul for Hagen's, and they got a problem with an injury for Maxey. Well, that was a really good call out of the timeout to go with that flex action a little. That's old time Tom Davis stuff. Dr. Tom. Dr. Who, Tom. That's who Bruce Pearl, that's who his mentor was and has been all these years. Bruce Pearl from Southern Indiana to Milwaukee to Tennessee and now here to Auburn. That was James Harden right there. Yep. He saw that McCormick, quickly saw that McCormick was reaching and just went right into his arm. Let's take a look at what happened to Tyrese Maxey here. Can't really see it. Already, yeah, yeah. Maybe he got his hand caught. He was trying to get, get around that screen. Harmless looking play, but it looks like a left thumb issue for Maxi. The bodies are flying. Let's bring in Holly. The athletic trainer Jeffrey Staten has examined his left hand right now. It's a left thumb right where it meets the palm of his hand. They are going to possibly tape it up right here, but he looks like he will be able to return. He keeps shaking it, getting his head shaking like, I got to get back in. Yeah, right there on the reach in, you can see it at the beginning of the play. And again, with Hagens having three fouls, it's a little bit dicey right now with a maxi on the bench. Hagens thought about the shot. Richards went to get a rebound, and instead it turned into a pass, and it's Auburn ball. Well, you really have to accept the physical challenge that Auburn presents. This is a physical basketball team, and they will chest you up. A little zone right now, 2-3 zone looks like for Kentucky. See if they can make Auburn prove it over the top. But Auburn can't settle for jumpers. They've got to penetrate the gaps of this zone, whether it's by the pass or the dribble. Not a great three-point shooting team on the season, just over 31%. And Ashton Hagens just picked up number four. Now Maxi is getting ready to come back in, so evidently his hand is okay. But they have lost Hagens now for a while. That's one of the problems playing zone is the blockout responsibilities. And going that right after the ball and hit Johnson head on. And remember what John Calipari said to Holly in the interview at the end of the first half. He said, I need Ashton in the game. Played less than 11 minutes in the first half, and who knows how long he'll have to sit right now. Well, Austin Wiley had a tip in or a tip dunk there. He's really done a nice job going after the offensive glass. Now remember, last time that Ashton Hagens was out of the game, Auburn brought a ton of pressure. Students behind us certainly bringing the noise right now and quickly does it again. Johnson cannot put that left arm out because quickly is just going into that arm. Now that happens in the NBA all the time. James Harden the best at this, but quickly sees that arm out and just goes right up into the arm, gives the official no choice but to call it. It has to be a shooting foul. It was initially signaled as a shooting foul, but now the officials are going to the monitor to verify. Oh no, now we're being told it will be shooting. They're looking to see whether it should be a two or a three. Second time that quickly has done the same thing. It was like replay. Yeah, I mean, it's the exact same play. Let's listen in as we did in the first half. Bruce Pearl wired for sound. They're not better than you on a good day. 
on a good day. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Run your fast break. Drive it deeper. There he is. There he is. We got to start better defensively. We got to make plays. There it is. There it is. Go. Shot. Bucket. How does he have a voice in practice tonight? Well, and how does he expect on the other end of the floor in this atmosphere for his players to hear him? <laughs> a better question. Boy, you foul Emmanuel quickly. Just mark him down. It's like watching a an intentional walk. I mean, you know what the result's going to be. He's such a good free throw shooter. 92% as you can see on the season. He is automatic. Jay. <laughs> it, that's not the way it works. You realize that's not the way it works. You said he was going to close his eyes in the first half, too, and he didn't do that. Well, maybe he did there. And just didn't forget to open them. Back to the 2-3 zone. The middle wide open. Dowdy looking for an opening. Just forces his way in. Oh, it does. Yeah. Offensive basket interference. Yeah. Somebody, I'm not sure who it was, it got was up there on the rim. It was Cambridge. Yeah. He touched the rim. There is no question. So wave off the basket. Boy, what a strong drive by Samir Dowdy. I want to praise the offensive rebounding effort. Because that took a bucket away. Off the screen quickly. Floater got it. Wow. He has just got his defender, in this case Johnson, on a string. Great job curling that little pin down screen. And a really nice job not moving his pivot foot once he put it down in the lane. Johnson has the three rejected. And great hustle by Cambridge to knock it out of bounds off of Richards. Now watch Emmanuel quickly, number five, coming off this little pin down. Now he already got the ball there. Just a little jab step, one dribble, and a little push shot. That's just beautifully done. Wiley lost it. Dowdy retrieves, less than 10 to shoot. Boy, again, Dowdy just forcing his way in, and this time Richards got all of it, but we got a foul call. Got the body. John Calipari saying he jumped straight up, but I thought it was a foul. See, he, he went into him. It wasn't like he was just standing under the basket going straight up. He didn't have legal guarding position there, and it was a really good job by Dowdy getting all the way to the rim. Dowdy unhappy after he missed the free throw inadvertently threw it down off his foot and it went out of bounds. Gotta be a little careful with that. Yeah. We've seen technical fouls handed out for that kind of thing before. Yeah. Remember, remember it happened, that happened to Isaac Humphreys. That's right. A few years ago, at Texas AM. Right. Yeah. One of the dumbest calls in basketball history. That was right near the end of the game, right? Yeah, it the was. Last minute of the game. It was. Yep. And there's the first point of the second half for Dowdy, who had 16 in the first half. Kentucky trying to get by without Ashton Hagens for who knows how long. He's got four fouls. They're trying to get quickly coming off that little pin down. Now you got to expect the high ball screen. Here it comes. It's Maxi splits the double team again and knocks in a left-handed runner and draws the foul. He is so good at splitting defenders. You have really got to stay connected when you are guarding the screener in that high screener roll action. A really nice job by Nick Richards to clear that area. And just a, a wonderful step through. Tyrese Maxey has game, man. This guy is a baller. He had 26 points against Michigan State, as you recall, to start the season. Just a fantastic way to start the year. And that 27 he had against Louisville, those were big time performances. He's got 14 tonight, quickly leads Kentucky with 19. The 2 3 zone. Okoro a little bit quiet at times tonight. Kicked it back out to Dowdy. They can wind up going man at the end of the clock. 
Now Coral with a hard drive. He'll head to the free throw line. Well, you, you have to be really smart defensively because Auburn goes body seeking when they drive. They're not just driving to get to the rim. They're driving to get into your body, draw the contact, and get to the free throw line. Watch how he draws the contact. Uh, you, Brooks would be better off just going up trying to block the shot rather than body him up. But, you know, all year long, you've been able to throw your chest into a shooter, and it hasn't been consistently called. One issue for Auburn, and it hasn't hurt them that much tonight. They've been shooting them pretty well, but generally they're not a good free throw shooting team. No. They're 67% on the season. Kentucky's one of the best in the nation. They're better than 77%. Yeah, Three-point shooting and free throw shooting has hurt Auburn. They're 12th in the SEC in both categories. Three-point percentage and free throw percentage. Okoro, 69% on the year, just missed them both. A 1-3-1 half-court defense right now for Auburn. They can trap out. What a play to deflect that. Maxi lost it. Doubt he's got a coral with him. Tried to do it himself. Yeah, there is. A, there was a lot of contact up there. Good block up top. And quickly took a shot to the side of the head as he came down with a rebound. The physical nature of this game continues between these two SEC rivals. Number 13, Kentucky. Number 17, Auburn in a back-and-forth affair. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. This is the SEC on ESPN. Aerial coverage is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to a State Farm agent today. With Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, I'm Dan Schulman. Auburn, Alabama. First time game day has ever come here as Auburn hosts Kentucky. And we see as the whole sports world, really even beyond the sports world, continues to remember Kobe Bryant after the passing of Bryant, his daughter Gigi, and the seven others who perished in the tragic helicopter crash on Sunday. Everything you're seeing here, this is on the shoes of players in this game here tonight. Kentucky players or Auburn players. Kentucky also is a team wearing warm-up shirts with both of Kobe Bryant's numbers on it. A uh, an emotional, to say the least, ceremony at the Staples Center last night before the Lakers game, their first game playing since the uh, the crash last Sunday, and just something, Jay, that people are still, it's still reverberating around the sports world and beyond. People still tr having difficulty, you know, trying to cope with it and assimilate what happened a few days ago. Just incredibly traumatic, yeah. and for all these young players, you know, Kobe Bryant was very active in the basketball community, and he met a lot of these, you know, big time prospects when they were in high school at the different camps, the Nike Skills Academies, and had developed relationships. And that Kobe Bryant was there, Michael Jordan. Yeah. That 1-3-1 one, one for Auburn, effective again. And I'll tell you, Kentucky has got to rebound. They are getting killed on the offensive glass. It is 15-1 in favor of Auburn in second chance points. Here's a switch now. Dowdy with the Richards on him up top, seven to shoot. Dowdy for three. Another offensive rebound, a long rebound. McLemore back out to Dowdy. McLemore can shoot it. Got to get out on him. I want to settle for jumpers here. Corner three not there for Flanagan, and that rebound belongs to Nick Richards. Nobody was taking that away from him. Yeah, I think you'd rather drive the ball a little bit, attack the rim with the opportunity to get to the foul line rather than settle for deep jumpers. That is not a strength of this Auburn team. Auburn tonight is just three for 19 from three-point range. So what they're gaining on the glass, they're losing from beyond the arc. A 3-2 zone here. And a Maxie's foul. Got it to the corner, gave up the baseline. Tyrese Maxie, you know, it's it's one thing to say, hey, we got to guard the ball better. Stay in front, force him to his left. Staying in front of this guy is a difficulty. He is a stud athlete. Earlier today in the SEC, LSU with a 10-point win over Ole Miss. So LSU still undefeated in league play at 8-0. Kentucky and Auburn, the next two teams in the SEC standings. And for Auburn, they will play LSU one week from today here 
in Auburn, and Auburn's got a return game at Kentucky later in the season, so a lot still to be decided in this league. LSU's road record the last two years in the SEC is ridiculous. They've got three different guys that can go get you a shot when you need one. And very few teams have that. McLemore, he'll shoot it. It's not a not a good shot. There was good pressure by Richards recovering. That was shot fake and drive. Maxi and Johnson stayed in front of him. Maxi backs it out. Smart decision. They continue to play without Hagens on the bench with four fouls. Now quickly with a shot clock under ten. Here comes their fist action, the high ball screen. A good job by McCormick wow, to stay in front. Should ever. Shot clock's at one. He walks. Shot clock violation. Boy, that's a good 30 seconds of defense, wasn't it? Just outstanding, especially Javon McCormick. For him to stay in front, that was really, really good defense by Auburn. Auburn's defended really, really well. It's just been their offense. You know, Holly Rowe talked about empty possessions. They've taken a couple of shots. You'd, they'd probably rather have back the last two possessions. They need to get the ball into the lane against this zone. Jay, we see Isaac Okoro back into the game. One for seven, three points. Quiet game for him. As they try to go over the top, and Montgomery is going to be called for undercutting McLemore. He gets whistled for the foul. McLemore along the baseline just snuck behind and got behind E.J. Montgomery, and just too much contact as he was going up for that. Number four on Montgomery. He takes a seat, looking for a replay as he goes to the bench, and Nate Sestina's back in. And the last thing you want to do if you're Kentucky is foul. You know, make Auburn take a tough shot and then go after the rebound. Well, they're leaving some points on the line now. Last couple of times down there, they've come up empty. And John Calipari outside the coach's box. I think this is just a just warning. warning. It's not a technical. It's just a warning. And by the way, to clean up something from the first half, we were told Bruce Pearl got his tee for being out of the coach's box. That is not what happened. The T was for an accumulation of um, saying more than he should have said in the direction of the officials. So that's why he eventually got teed up. How was that? Was that diplomatic enough? Very diplomatic. Thank you. I am Canadian enough. Limited minutes for Sestina for Kentucky today. He's a threat from beyond the arc. The grad transfer from Bucknell. Quickly off balance. Richards the follow. Anytime you go to try to block a shot, that's going to open up the offensive glass, and Richards took advantage of it. Boy, this 2-3 is pretty wide and long. But Okoro can drive it. He's trying. Bounce pass. McLemore! It's simple. I mean, drive a gap. You make the middleman play in, then dump it off. And McLemore was down in what they call the dunk spot. And you have to penetrate those gaps, and the gaps were wide. Brooks looking into Richards, doesn't get it to him. The cross screen quickly set the screen for Richards to get him open. Left hand, no. Auburn ball. Boy, bodies are flying right now. And Double we've got foul. Yeah, you're right. I hate it when they do that. They couldn't they couldn't tell who started it, so they called it on both of them. McLemore and Richards. Actually, the foul's on Richards. I'm pretty sure that saddling up a, a guy and riding him from the top is a foul on the defense. That's just, a, that's just an official not paying attention, honestly. So they bail out with a double foul. Juzang in for Brooks. Second on Richards and on McLemore as well. Hagen's the only player with a four. He continues to ride the bench right now for Kentucky. A number of players on both sides have three. Montgomery also has four. He's on the bench as well for the Wildcats. Still have to penetrate this. Here comes a ball screen against the zone. 
McLemore needs some help, and he needs it fast. McCormick forces it. Air ball. Kentucky ball. It's a bad possession for Auburn. Good defense by Kentucky. Anytime you go after a block shot, you can open up the offensive glass. And Nick Richards takes advantage of an open backboard and jams it in. And penetrating the zone, freezing the middleman. Pocket pass and Anthony McLemore with the easy dunk. We got a good one, Dan Showman. Oh, so much going on each and every Saturday in the college basketball season. How about this? Three ranked home teams in the Big East lost today. Villanova, Seton Hall, and Butler all losing on their respective home courts. Big win for Wisconsin, holding off Michigan State late and beating the Spartans by a point. The Spartans have now lost three of their last six. And Cole Anthony is back. BC and Carolina tied at 68 with a minute and a half to go in the second half. That game currently airing on the ACC network, and Anthony has 24 points so far in his return. Still to come. It'll start on ESPN News before it moves over to ESPN after the conclusion of this game. It'll be Elijah Hughes, who quietly is having a great year. And what an opportunity for Syracuse tonight, Jay, to pick up a significant win with Duke in town. Well, it seemed like the first half of the season, Syracuse couldn't buy a win. And then the last 10 games or so, the Orange have really started to play much better and started to play really well at times. And a big reason has been the offense of Elijah Hughes and Buddy Beheim, both of whom could put 30 on you in a given night. I mean, against, I think it was Virginia Tech, Buddy Beheim scored 18 straight points yeah. for the Orange. And those two have the ultimate green light from Jim Beheim. 7.38 to go here in Auburn with Kentucky leading by three. And Max, he's got to use a timeout. Can't get the ball in. So we'll step aside here in Auburn. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. With more ways to file, it's better with Block. And in part by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Sports Center comes your way tonight after Duke Syracuse with John Butchergrass and John Anderson. They'll break down a big NBA matchup tonight between the Celtics and the 76ers. Our crew in Miami has the very latest news on the eve of Super Bowl 54 and inside this year's Pro Football Hall of Fame class. Sports Center after college hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Who wins the Super Bowl? I like Kansas City, but. Ashton Hagen's back into the ball game for Kentucky. And Kentucky having a hard time getting the ball in bounds. And Kentucky actually outscored Auburn 10 to 3 during those minutes that Hagen's was on the bench. Quickly and Maxie just so hard to guard. They'll be even harder to guard with Hagen's back in the game to handle the ball. Hagen's the drive, the force. Auburn ball. Well, Dowdy was wide open on the far side of the court. McCormick didn't see him, and Dowdy, who now has the ball, was visibly displeased at not getting it. 2-3 zone. They got quickly and Maxi out top. And then Hagen's down on the baseline. And the wind up essentially going man with all the action here. Auburn's got to get a look soon. They will. Okoro. Yes! What a beautiful job not to panic as the shot clock was going down and find the open man on the other side of the floor. The best place to score is the other side of the floor. Just a 26% three-point shooter, Isaac Okoro has tied the game. Well, what a great matchup, Dowdy and Quickly. Quickly slipped, and it results in a turnover. So he tried to curl. That little screen on the block slipped, and that led to the turnover. Okoro needs to drive when he gets the ball. And a kick ball. Well, just a terrific job getting the ball from one side of the floor to the other. 
and finding the open man. Could have gone to Purifoy, but instead went to Okoro. And just a beautiful wide open three-point shot. Shot clock resets to 20 after the kickball. And now we get a foul going against Kentucky. That's, Maxi. That same play they run out of bounds where you have four along the baseline that just throw it to the elbow and get a little ball screen. Elbow to elbow so that Okoro can turn the corner. Okoro to the line. Another chance to listen in to Bruce Pearl tonight. We're down three. We're down three. You guys should be excited about the last seven and a half minutes. Your energy and your team hit. Senior, senior for senior, senior, senior. It's our time. It's our time right now. That's great awareness. He knows how old they all are. <laughs> but back to what we were talking about in the first half. I don't know if you caught it there. Senior, senior, fa senior, senior, senior. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okoro's uh, a freshman, but he's so mature, he calls him a fa senior. <laughs> Higgins keeps possession. Look at the position here for Richards. And the second time, he'll get it through. He got fouled the first time, just didn't call it. So you better be prepared to get hit when you go up for a shot because. No fouls are being called in this game. They're staying in the zone. Maxi trying to figure out where he should be right now. Finds a man down on the baseline. Again, the shot clock becomes a factor. And Doughty is fouled by quickly. Ashton Hagens on the other end, on the offensive end, mishandled the ball, and that actually opened up Nick Richards there when he got the ball. He did a terrific job of sealing inside. He got fouled on the first portion of it, but stuck with it. You see McLemore botting him up and just throws his body right into Richards. Like, that is a foul on any level of basketball. And for some reason in college basketball, the officials have stopped calling that. Jay, look at the foul trouble right now for Kentucky. Hagens quickly, Montgomery, Montgomery on the bench, but Hagens and quickly each with four fouls. Uh, and for Auburn, they have to take advantage of that. Drive the ball after moving it from side to side, drive it and put Kentucky in a position to foul or in a position to back off. And then again, for them, hopefully knock down their free throws. They are not a good free throw shooting team. And McCormick does a nice job staying in front. And this is a hard guy to stay in front of. Switch. Sestina for three. Downey the rebound. Okoro. Everything but the finish, but he's going to the line. Boy, what a great job by Okoro. A terrific pass by Doughty, but a great job by Okoro of moving the ball from his right to his left hand to try to finish this. And got the foul from Nick Richards. That's just a big time play. And almost got it to go. That close. Coro to the line. Holly Rose got more. Well, guys, Bruce Pearl told us yesterday at practice that Acura, this freshman, has more impact on winning than anybody on this team. He said it's just his personality. It's his M.O. He is a big joy to coach as any kid I have ever coached in my entire career. And we're seeing it, whether it's defensively hitting big threes when that's not really his game. He is a winner, and Bruce Pearl loves having him on the floor in this moment. Holly, thank you. Acura makes them both and extends the lead to three. Still a lot of time. Hagen's off the ball. Maxi brings it up. Here comes a high ball screen. Another split. Man, oh man. Just big time. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the screen is being set so high that if you commit and you're not connected, he's going to split those defenders and be able to get all the way downhill to the basket. And good luck stopping it. Okoro, more assertive now, misses it. And Maxi the other way for the Cats. Maxi, not this time, but there is a foul. Now watch Maxi handle this high screen. Got a high screen, there's way too much space there. Austin Wiley has to stay connected to Nick Richards because that you could drive a truck through that and a, a guard as good as Maxi that is way too much space good free throw shooter 82 percent 
How come everything works out when you when you start talking about the free throw percentage? <laughs> I say something, you yeah. claim there's an announcer jinx or something. Uh, I'm living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the next one. Somebody, the next guy who steps I just don't line, believe in that. Not that we need to devolve into yeah. that, but yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe when you talk to a pitcher when he's got a no-hitter, it has yeah. anything to do with the next pitch. Well, I don't believe it would either, but it was fun for me to call you on it when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Foy with a corner three. Man, what a big shot by Jamjel Pirofoy. And he took it without hesitation. Better job staying connected there by Wiley. Maxie trying to take over late here for Kentucky. Oh, what a rebound. Ball's loose. Doubt he's got it. No, we've got a Kentucky foul beforehand as a Coral was attempting to pass the ball. So it'll be Auburn at the line when we come back up by two, 3.36 to play. A spectacular rebound by Isaac Okoro and a spectacular three in the corner by Dangel Purifoy. The stretch four coming through. More hoops coming your way. Hurricane, hey, coming up here on ESPN, Duke at Syracuse, but they have tipped off and that is currently airing on ESPN News. Jay and Dan, back to you guys. Allison, thank you very much. So a big day of college basketball as we start to move into a big evening of college basketball. And how about this game here today? Auburn leading by two. And how about Ashton Hagen's day just fouling out of the game? Well, Isaac Okoro grabbed a big time rebound after Purifoy knocked this ball out. Went after it with two hands and then Ashton Hagen's fouls him as he's trying to get the ball down court to Samir Doughty. That's the fifth foul on Ashton Hagen's. Not a smart play by Hagen's but just reacted in the moment. And Hagens fouls out of the game with just five points, six turnovers, and a plus minus of minus 11. So minus 11 points when he was on the floor in his 21 minutes. Tonight, our NBA Saturday primetime matchup. A big battle in the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid in the 76ers, Jason Tatum in the Celtics. Coverage begins with a jump at 8 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. All-star Jason Tatum. That's right. And all-star Joel Embiid. Embiid an all-star in his third year, last year as well. And Jason Tatum, his first ever all-star appearance. Isaac Okoro at the line for Auburn. They have been to the line now 35 times tonight. They have made 25 of them. It's really been a gigantic part of the offense because Auburn has not shot a good percentage from the field. And it's not often you shoot 33% from the field and have a chance to win a game. Well, their offensive rebounding has been off the charts. Good. 16 offensive boards in this game. Sestina for three. Wiley with a big time rebound. Richards is called for the foul. That'll be his fourth. Austin Wiley is an elite level rebounder. He averages over nine rebounds per game, three of them on the offensive end, and he goes after the ball with two hands. And coaches talk about that, but not all players do it. It's easier to go after it with one and try to corral it. Wiley goes after it with two. Austin Wiley comes from basketball royalty. His mom, Vicki Orr, had her number retired here. She also wore number 50. And his dad, Aubrey, led the Southeastern Conference in rebounding. Uh, what a bounce on the second. There's mom. Vicki Orr was a great player. Auburn by five, and if possible, it's getting even louder. What? Huh? Quickly forces it up and somehow gets it to go. What a play Ooh. by Emmanuel Quickly. Well, Quickly and Maxi can make something out of nothing about as well as any guard combo in America. Well, those two have been just terrific tonight. Pearl thought about it. So they drive on Brooks. 
Step back three. Whoa, got he got it! Isaac Okoro is doing it every which way in this game. What a shot! And the guts to take it, too. So big in the last few minutes for Auburn. Wow. And another one for Quickly. He's so good with that shot fake jab step, getting Purefoy just a bit off balance, then driving it and kissing it off the glass. That's a big time move by Emmanuel Quickly. Quickly with 23, Maxi with 20, as they keep Kentucky afloat here in Auburn. Auburn needs to move the ball. Coro wants to take over. That's foul. And the tip goes up and in for Wiley. Wiley got away with a little bit of a push. Got Richards out from underneath the basket. Tipped it in. Maxi draws the foul. With good luck staying in front of these ultra quick and explosive guards from Kentucky. The shot fake got Purifoy off balance, got him off the floor, and then a beautiful finish by Emmanuel quickly. And that was a foul that wasn't called, but because Wiley was able to get to the offensive glass, yet another offensive rebound for Auburn. Minute 37 to go, four-point lead, Auburn. One, two, two, three-quarter court from Kentucky. Well, Wiley was begging for the ball. Had Sestina sealed down under the bucket. Well, he's smart not to go for that right now. Just run a little clock. Okoro. And he threw it off the back of the backboard. Well, it hit or the Kentucky underside. first. Yeah. Thought he got away with an extra step there. Boy, he is a bull when he puts his head down and drives. Yeah, he refused that little ball screen that was coming his way. sestina has got to put good pressure on this. Coro driving again. And is fouled before the shot. you got to run another defender at him. Because he is looking to drive at every opportunity. And one, one guy is not going to be able to stay in front of him. He's just too strong. Double bonus both ways, two free throws, both teams the rest of the way. Mm. Well, he needs to work on this. because he's, he's a decent free throw shooter, but he's going to live at the line with his ability level. He is 5 for 11 tonight. Kentucky cannot settle here. And a timeout taken by John Calipari. A minute five to go. The Wildcats down by five here in Auburn. Points, although Carolina lost at home to BC by one. Make it 26 points for Cole Anthony in his return to the Tar Heels lineup. We will have Duke in Carolina, six o'clock Eastern time, one week from today. Meanwhile, we got a five-point game here with just over a minute to go. Kentucky ball, Auburn leading. Going with a zone look right now for Auburn. You like it out of the timeout? I do. Step in quickly. No. And who's it going against? It is going against Kentucky. Auburn goes after the ball so hard. They've generated a lot of these fouls by how they, how hard they've pursued the ball. Like, Purifoy went after that ball hard. And, Jay, that's number five on Emmanuel quickly. Well, you had Dowdy going after it with two hands. Quickly, they must have said quickly was on his back. And I don't know how you can call it from the angle where the official came in from. Because from that angle, everything looks like it's on his back. Like you're being shielded out. Yeah, he hit him. Yeah. So quickly becomes the second Wildcat to foul out. He just tied a career high with 23 today. Hagen's out, quickly out. So now Maxi is in there along with Juzang, Brooks, Sestina, and Richards. 
as Dowdy tries to add to the lead at the line. 74% free throw shooter. I'm not sure that if Bruce Pearl could pick anyone, he'd pick anyone other than Samir Dowdy in this situation. He's a Philly guy, and he's tough-minded. Three-possession game, less than a minute to go. Maxi trying to do it himself. Tough shot. Smart by Bruce Pearl to stick with that zone. Just confusing. And John Calipari's unhappy. He was telling them to foul McCormick, and they fouled Dowdy. But you can't hear anything in this arena right now. I'll tell you, for, for Auburn to shoot the ball at the low percentage they did, it's really remarkable that this team can find a way to win with its defense, offensive rebounding, and then finding a way to get fouled and get to the free throw line, attacking the paint off the dribble. Just really impressive. They've taken 20 more free throws in this game than Kentucky has. Auburn played older in this game. Four seniors who start, five in the rotation. Out of the pack comes Dowdy. John Calipari says, don't foul. Much to the delight of this raucous crowd here in the Auburn Arena, the Tigers will knock off Kentucky here today. Not just beating Kentucky, but staying within striking distance of LSU. What a scene here at the Auburn Arena. This is the first time since 1990 that the Tigers have defeated the Wildcats twice in a row. Did it in the Elite Eight last year, and now they do it here this season. They'll meet again in Lexington later on in the year. Holly Rowe is with Bruce Pearl. Well, Coach, this group is a new group, not the kids that beat Kentucky to go to the Final Four. How did they show up and make a name for themselves tonight? They took a big step tonight, Ollie, with, with, with all you guys here. Kentucky's a good basketball team. This team's got character. It's got heart. It's got good, good kids, great men as coaches, an unbelievable fun.